Welcome to this session of the ThinApp Bootcamp series on ThinApp Performance Enhancing. In this session, we will first be reviewing the basics of application virtualization. From there, we will conduct an overview of virtual application performance as well as some concepts to understand. We will follow this with identification of where the slowness issues reside as well as a brief discussion on perceptions around what is slow. Then we will discuss some common causes and potential solutions for both the native and virtual environments, followed by our conclusions and general reference for assistance in ThinApp performance enhancing. Let's get started. To briefly review what application virtualization is, application virtualization is technology which encapsulates the Windows application in order to make it Windows OS agnostic and transferable. It is generally used to resolve such issues as application conflicts, application deployment and update difficulties, reduce overall support time spent upon applications, and allow continued utilization of legacy applications. Oftentimes, customers may see their thin app captured application work. However, some portion of the virtualized app is slow. So why would a virtualized application be slower than a natively installed instance of the same application? For starters, virtualized applications load up differently than native applications. They have supporting layers or runtime engines which must be loaded accordingly in order for the virtualized application to work properly on any supported Windows operating system. While the exact load time is dependent upon application virtualization product and version, with ThinApp the load time is drastically smaller than competitive products according to third-party analysts. Application dependent services and child processes are also handled differently. Where auto-started services for native applications are launched during bootup of the Windows OS, a delay masked by the bootup of the Windows PC, a ThinApp packaged app with auto-started services must take the time to ensure these services are launched first and properly running prior to executing the virtualized application. As this delay of service startup is not being masked by anything, it becomes apparent to end users. The same goes for any necessary child processes which run after the parent application starts. ThinApp packages also utilize a sandbox for any runtime modification storage, and it is created per application per user. If the sandbox doesn't exist during initial execution, this is something the ThinApp virtual operating system must create in order to support the execution of the ThinApp package. While this sandbox by default is stateful, the creation of the sandbox can add additional time to the initial ThinApp package launch, and it is especially dependent upon the location of the sandbox. In later discussions, we will see it is important the sandbox be placed in a location where the individual user has complete access as well as somewhere locally or on the network which has a low latency connection to the user's desktop environment, as improper location of the sandbox can also be a detriment to startup and runtimes of virtualized applications. When it comes to obfuscation of processes and objects and how the application loads, for those of us who are not Windows application developers, it may not be apparent to us how the Windows application we're dealing with works. As an example, it is a common misconception Windows applications go right to the file registry key or object they need in order to accomplish a task. This, however, is not true. Anyone who has generated trace logs of a Windows application which are properly working will note many returned errors even though the application being logged is performing normally. This is due to each Windows operating system being a unique entity as what is installed and configured on two systems can vary greatly even though the same OS and applications, including versions, are installed on both. Developers must handle these environment variables by allowing their applications to search the system it is running upon, often multiple times or even continuously while the application is running. In addition, ThinApp must both address and handle how the application is conducting these searches, whether the searches be of the registry for an entry, the file system for a specific file, the memory space for a loaded object, or of the process list for running processes, as well as how ThinApp allows the application to address and interact with the item it finds in conclusion of the search. Application developers will write their application installers to determine a large majority of these variables up front. However, when using ThinApp to virtualize the application, many of the searches for these variables must now be accommodated by the ThinApp runtime, as all of this handling of the virtualized application is done so by the virtual operating system during the use of the ThinApp packaged application. 
Remembering the first slide in this session, application virtualization is technology which encapsulates the Windows application in order to make it Windows OS agnostic and transferable. Therefore, what is loaded into memory during use of a ThinUp packaged application can vary greatly as each user environment is infinitely unique, whether it's difference in network, desktop, user, or application settings. And finally, as many viewers may be aware, size of an application can affect load times for the application in question, as well as other applications which hook into it. The same can be said about ThinUp packaged apps, as the size of the ThinUp package can affect the startup time, as the larger the application, the longer it takes the Windows OS to load it. This is especially true if the ThinUp package data container is one large executable. In later discussions, we will see what causes and effects surround the size of a ThinUp package and how to address any slowness due to the ThinUp package sizes. It should be noted here, the ThinUp virtual operating system is less than 500 kilobytes of the ThinUp packaged app on disk and only one additional megabyte in memory during execution of the ThinUp packaged application. While it is generally understood each application is unique, from the previous discussion one can start to see not only how each ThinUp package of the same application is also unique, but how each execution of the same ThinUp package is unique based upon the user environment the ThinUp packaged app is executing within. Understanding this concept will greatly benefit the application packager, both in how the ThinUp package is created and deployed along with what pitfalls to avoid. When it comes to end-user happiness, perception is definitely reality for IT, and as with all IT-related issues, it's important to understand the difference between what the end-user perceives to be an issue and what is an actual issue. Setting end-user expectations through hands-on training or other means may go a long way in alleviating unnecessary work. That said, ultimately the key in solving a slow virtualized app is finding where the slowness exists. Regarding ThinApp, there are three general categories defined around the interaction of a ThinApp packaged application. The first is when registering this ThinApp application. Next is at initial launch or execution of the ThinApp packaged application. This can also be subdivided into initial launch and subsequent launch categories as well. And last is during runtime of the ThinUp packaged application, which can also be subdivided into general execution and specific process or procedure categories as well. Knowing where the slowness is, even if it's in multiple areas, will help identify possible causes to the ThinUp package slowness, both in the virtual and native environments. Regarding the native environment, the first two questions to be asked are, where does the ThinUp package reside and where does the ThinUp sandbox reside? If either the ThinUp package or sandbox reside on network shared or removable media, it is important to test the ThinUp package with the application and sandbox defined to use a local Windows workstation drive, whether the workstation be physical or virtual. Doing so will help define where the perceived slowness issue resides. When it comes to ThinApp applications on a network share, it should be noted when experiencing slowness from a ThinApp packaged app which resides on a network share or whose sandbox resides on a network share, it is almost assuredly a native environmental issue. Usually, slowness issues involving network shares are due to the ThinApp packaged application being subjected to not only the network traffic, but more importantly, the Windows network stack and underlying architecture overhead when being accessed from a remote share. VMware View or other similar technologies will eliminate some of this perceived slowness as the desktop presumably would be running in the same data center logically next to the file share where the ThinUp packages exist. To use an analogy, when placing a ThinUp package or ThinUp sandbox on a network share, Think back to the old days when IT admins were installing Office 95 to a network share as they may not have had but 30 meg hard drives and Office 95 was often too big for this. In those cases, Office 95 didn't run as well from the network share versus when installed completely locally as it had to cross the network to get to these files needed in order to run. The exact same thing is happening here when placing a ThinApp packaged app or sandbox on a network share. To provide additional clarity, 
It is important to understand it is not wrong to place thin up packages and or sandboxes upon network shares. What is important is how doing so may affect your virtualized app performance as it may cause perceived issues where none exist due to the many network environment variables. Some common things to check are logical path and or number of hops between the file share and desktop, whether the desktop is physical, virtual, or remote. There is no recommended configuration here as it is completely environment dependent. For example, 30 hops on a 10 gigabit network might actually be perceptibly quicker than 3 hops on a 10 megabit network or vice versa depending upon other network environment conditions. Another item to keep in mind is what underlying system and hardware is servicing the shared network drive. ThinApp packages can sit on any SMB or SIF share accessible by Windows, but it is important to ensure the hardware can support file services at the level you need it to. An analogy regarding ThinApp packages and shares is to think of a remote share of ThinApp packages much like a 16-bit flat file database, as there are going to be times of higher demand for files. When these times will be is highly dependent upon your network environment and types of users. It is also important to check if the server hosting the share is busy doing other things which are tasked at a higher priority. ThinApp packages generally have no problems running from slower systems, but making the user wait is not necessarily a good perception for any IT person. This might mean selecting a server which has a lesser load to host your ThinApp packages, or setting up some sort of distributed file system or remote share replication so users don't all hit one specific server and ultimately creating a choke point for your network environment. Additionally, it's important to note how the server share is configured. While not directly specific to performance, it is still important to ensure the remote system share settings, whether SMB, SIFs, or NTFS, are not too limiting for users. Typically, users only need read permissions and not write permissions to run ThinApp packaged apps. However, on a SIF space share, it is important to remember read permissions do not equal execute permissions as they do on an SMB share. This means the user executing the ThinApp packages from a SIF share will need execute permissions as well. This specifically is not a slowness issue per se, since the user with too restrictive of permissions will just not be able to launch the ThinApp, but it does point to how permissions can negatively affect a ThinApp packaged application. With respect to the ThinApp sandbox, while the ThinApp package can be located on a read-only network location, the sandbox must be in a location where the user has write permissions. Additionally, leaving the sandbox on local system drives can help with speed of the ThinApp package if the app does a lot of writing to the sandbox, such as temp files or database files, as the reading and writing speed of the sandbox is also affected by the environment it sits within. If the sandbox is on a remote share, such as a home drive, roaming profile, or etc., then it is also affected by the network traffic Windows network stack, and network architecture overheads. No matter where the ThinApp package or sandbox reside, antivirus and other anti-malware solutions may also affect system and application performance, not only of native applications, but of virtual applications as well. If such technologies as on-demand antivirus or anti-malware scanning are enabled, these security services could severely reduce performance of a ThinApp package, and the larger the ThinApp package executable files are, the longer the on-demand scanning times become, in turn affecting launch times for the ThinApp package. One common tactic seen to reduce the overall time taken by on-demand antivirus or anti-malware suites is to utilize a separate ThinApp data container versus a single larger executable. What this ultimately does is create a separate large file containing everything needed for the ThinApp package while leaving all entry points roughly 1 meg or less in size. In conjunction with this, some customers have modified on-demand scanning to exclude ThinApp data container files. For ThinApp packages residing on a remote share, it is common to see customers either adjust on-demand scanning to inbound files only, or disable on-demand completely, substituting a periodic scheduled scan during off hours instead to ensure the folder remains clean. Additionally, most of these customers also ensure users only have read access to the share, 
Whether such modifications can be done in your environment, however, may be based upon company policies and local government regulations. And lastly, for common native interferences, it is important to be aware of other network traffic when users are running the ThinUp packaged application and or the sandbox from a network share. This is where having a network share providing the ThinUp package and or sandbox as logically close to the user's desktop as possible is highly beneficial. In the case of remote desktop technologies such as VMware View, these can greatly assist in reducing any network overhead by having the user's desktop and any network shares located in the same data center on the same high-speed network segments. Moving into the ThinUp package, there are some things to consider which may affect registration, execution, and runtime speeds. With the virtual environment, we start by addressing execution first since this is generally the primary area of concern for ThinUp package slowness with customers. As mentioned in the previous slide regarding size, larger applications will generally take more time in execution as there is more being loaded. Specific to ThinApp, it is important to ensure the data container is not set to utilize one of the ThinApp packaged entry points. In other words, the data container should not be an .exe file. When a project size is calculated to roughly exceed 200 megabytes in size, ThinApp Setup Capture will automatically select the use of a separate data container file, or DAT file, and warn if the application packager attempts to change back to use of an entry point for the primary data container. Again, this recommendation is initiated when the project roughly exceeds 200 megabytes in size. However, it is generally recommended to create a separate data container file for any ThinApp packages where possible, as this will help improve packaged app performance. An additional note here, the data container file is not extension specific and can be reset prior to build or rebuild by simply changing the data container name settings within the ThinApp Setup Capture or Package INI file. In this quick demonstration, we see a ThinApp package captured and said to be a single executable where the data container and entry point are of the same file. The single file size is just shy of 23 megabytes. By editing the package.ini file, we can change this from a single executable to a small exe and separate data container file with a DAT extension. The end result is the data container file is now just shy of 23 megabyte and a separate 375 kilobyte executable is created. Because of this reconfiguration, on-demand AV or anti-malware scanning can be reconfigured to scan only the executable files of a ThinApp package and not the data container files of a ThinApp package, thereby reducing overhead when launching. Another thing to check for in the ThinApp project is leftover files and folders from the install which are no longer required for the application to run. These can include such folders as the system root installer folder. The contents of this folder will likely contain some MSI files. These MSI files can usually be removed if they are not needed. App data, local app data, and profile folders. Since these folders are all part of the user's profile, if the application is installed to the entire system, meaning anyone can log in to the specific system the app is installed natively on and launch the app, then the contents of these folders are not typically needed unless it is desired to package the customer user configuration information with the application. The Cookies, History, and Internet Explorer Cache Folders Unless actually capturing an Internet Explorer application or an Internet Explorer plugin or add-on, these folders may not be needed for your specific application, and thus each folder can be removed. Any specific program application backup folder. Sometimes an application will install a backup of itself into a subfolder of the program files app folder or elsewhere. This is typically for auto repair functionality and often operates much like the system root installer folder contents for repairing the application. 
As an example, Adobe products, depending upon the product and the version of the product, will often store a complete backup of the installation source code within an Adobe subfolder. Sometimes it's hidden as well under Adobe patch files, so it boils down to knowing your application. Any specific application which installs a large number of fonts can also cause a delay in the launch of the ThinUp packaged application, as each font is registered during the launch of the ThinUp package. If most or all of the fonts are not necessary, or if you'd rather have the fonts loaded natively onto your user's desktop, then the percent fonts percent folder may be removed or the unnecessary fonts within it may be removed to improve performance during the startup of the ThinUp packaged application. Services within a ThinUp package are another item which can cause delays of varying length during launch. Oftentimes, customers may not be aware the application has even installed services until they go to virtualize the application. It should be noted when capturing applications with services, it is best to ensure services are stopped prior to concluding the ThinUp post setup capture. This will ensure all files are unlocked. While ThinApp can virtualize services, it is important to know how they are used and what can be done with them. And here's where having a natively installed version of the application for testing is a huge benefit. Whether the app is installed natively on another workstation, or one needs to roll back the capture and build VM to a snapshot where the app is installed native. This allows administrators to quickly test stopping any unnecessary services. Another option here which may produce similar results is to edit the package.ini file to enable the virtual command prompt entry point and rebuild the ThinUp package. This will allow the application packager to open up the virtual memory space both before and after the virtual application is launched, providing the ability to manually stop and start services to see which are absolutely necessary and which are just helper services. An example of a common service which is not always needed is the .NET Runtime Optimization Service, better known as the Microsoft .NET Framework Service. While some applications do require this service prior to the application being launched, other applications may only require the framework be present without needing the optimization service running. In these later scenarios with regards to ThinApp, it can be notably different in start times. For those applications which require services, it is important those services are started in the proper order. With auto-started services at boot up, Windows handles the service prerequisites, especially if one auto-started service requires another auto-started service. Within ThinApp, the virtual operating system must handle this, and oftentimes the delay can be lengthy depending upon what the service does for the application, a delay normally masked by the Windows boot up. In these scenarios, it may be necessary to disable the auto-starting of services within the ThinApp package and utilize a different tool such as ThinApp scripting support and have a built-in VB script within the ThinApp package handle the starting and stopping of these services. In this demonstration, we've created three ThinApp packages of an application called Paint.net. In folder one, we have the original capture of paint.net without any modifications. Folder two is a straight copy of folder one with the following two modifications. The first, removal of all unnecessary files and folders such as mentioned before. And the second, disablement of the .NET runtime optimization service. Folder 3 is a separate capture where the .NET framework was compiled in addition to the application capture. This was done by reverting to a VM snapshot, which was done after setup capture pre-scan and application install, but prior to setup capture post-scan. All three captures have Microsoft .NET framework as part of their ThinApp package. In project folder one, we can see the extraneous folders and files present and note the data container is 489 megabytes in size. In project folder two, 
we no longer see the extraneous folders and files, and looking at the HQ Local Machine Registry Hive file, we see the .NET Optimization Runtime Service has been disabled. We can also see the data container for this project is roughly 40 megs smaller in size. Project Folder 3 has the same optimizations conducted to it as in Project Folder 2, however, since we compiled the .NET Framework libraries, the data container is roughly 100 megabytes larger in size. To properly note the launch time differences, we've ensured all three projects utilize separate sandbox folders as well. Here we can see the package of the original project takes roughly 3 seconds. Launching the package for the second project, we see it takes roughly between 1.5 and, and 2 seconds. And finally, the third package takes roughly one second to launch. Lastly, regarding services, ThinApp also has the ability to set a service within a ThinApp package to auto start at boot time like any natively installed service. This can be done through some reconfiguration of the ThinApp package, but it should be noted the ThinApp package must be registered to the system in order to have the service auto-started like any other. In this demonstration, to show just the difference with using a boot time service, we have taken a copy of the original ThinApp package of paint.net used previously, which has no modifications done except for a corrected icon, and simply reconfigured it to start Microsoft's .NET Optimization Runtime Service during boot of the Windows operating system. This is done by editing the package.ini file and enabling the service equals value and resetting or disabling the disabled equals one value for the service entry point. Here in this demo, we have already rebuilt this package with these modifications, and we can see an additional entry point for the service created as well called mscorsvw.exe. In order to register this ThinApp package, we must use an MSI for deployment. This is because use of the thinreg.exe utility is not supported with boot time services, as Windows service applications must be installed natively and will not work remotely from a network share since network shares are not present during boot up of a Windows operating system. It should also be noted, a ThinApp generated MSI is the sole delivery mechanism used for ThinApp boot time services. Once the MSI has been executed and the ThinApp package installed, you will see all boot time services registered and started within the Windows Service Manager console. Testing the start time, we now see this ThinApp package of paint.net starts much more quickly than the original time of roughly 3 seconds. Continuing on with slowness of a ThinApp packaged application at execution, there are a number of scenarios which can cause excessive load times due to file operations. Creation of either large or numerous database files within the sandbox or native file system on initial launch is one such common scenario. 
This, however, may be unavoidable depending upon initial launch environment configurations of the application and properly setting user expectations may be the only option here for a slow initial launch. If subsequent launches of the ThinApp package are just as slow, then other configuration options may be necessary such as the use of additional ThinApp features like application linking, ThinApp boot time services, or ThinApp support of VB scripting. And lastly, regarding launch slowness, configuration issues or general misconfigurations within the ThinApp package can cause delays in the application starting. While it's not necessarily a misconfiguration, as we previously discussed and saw in one of the demonstrations, compilation of the Microsoft.NET framework components can help improve performance of an application which is dependent upon such frameworks. It again should be noted this will potentially create a larger thin app package, however, in most scenarios, application performance is more important than application size. One of the more prominent misconfiguration issues with ThinApp slowness is the Microsoft installer's auto repair and reinstallation features. It's not uncommon to create a ThinApp package of an application only to have the ThinApp version of the application launch the Microsoft installer in an attempt to repair the issue. A very basic description of what is occurring to trigger the auto repair is one or more of the key paths are missing from the environment or incorrectly set. A key path is essentially something defined by the manufacturer within the MSI, which the application checks upon execution to ensure no parts were removed or misadjusted between the current and last executions. The Microsoft Installer Auto Repair is primarily a feature used to ensure no other app manufacturers step on the specific application in question if other applications are installed afterwards. Within ThinApp, oftentimes the key paths are being falsely triggered, even though the application components are all captured within the ThinApp package. This is due to the key paths not being reported correctly upon application execution. Therefore, a simple resolution to the issue regarding ThinApp is disabling the key paths within the ThinApp package which the application is looking. As a reference on how to go about doing this, VMwareInfo.com has an article, Surgically Eliminating Windows Installer App Repairs, by Jacques Bensimon, which is a recommended read on how to accomplish this properly. For easy access to this information, we've created a shortened link here, bit.ly forward slash eliminate windows installer repairs. Moving on to the runtime phase of a ThinApp package, much of the same rules apply here as with execution of a ThinApp package. In most cases, if a ThinApp packaged application does run noticeably slower throughout its entire use, it is generally a native environmental based issue, a topic which we've previously covered in the native issues section of this presentation. However, there are some items within the virtual application which may cause slower runtimes throughout the use of the application. Generally, these are configuration issues such as Microsoft installers running hidden in the background or other objects and components which is looking for are not able to be found or not able to be found quickly. Regarding the Microsoft installer issue, this is essentially the same as the Microsoft installer auto repair features discussed previously. However, in this scenario, the installer is running hidden in the background. For this, the only way to detect if something is running in the background is to utilize tools such as those provided freely by Microsoft Sys internals, such as Process Explorer and Process Monitor. The latest version of these tools can be downloaded from Microsoft MSD Insight or directly from sysinternals.com. Similar to utilizing Microsoft Sys internals tools is the use of the ThinApp Log Monitor for detecting misconfigured objects or components within the ThinApp package. This is often detected by looking for search loops within the ThinApp log monitor text trace logs as a loop may indicate the application is having trouble locating an object such as a DLL library file or registry value. Being able to ensure the application finds these items in its first search location will help speed up the specific feature being used during runtime of the ThinApp packaged application. It should be noted, this type of evaluation and customization is highly specific to the application and can take some time and additional application expertise to accomplish. 
When it comes to registration of ThinApp packaged applications, a number of things both natively and virtually can cause slowness around getting the applications to the user. The most important thing to look at first is where the ThinApp package is located, as this will quickly tell you what additional items in your environment you may need to look at. As always with Windows environments, any locally contained processes or functions will run more quickly than if those same processes or functions needed to traverse a network. And registration of thin -up packages residing on removable media, while technically possible, may not be wise for end users simply because removing the media breaks the registration. The next thing to look at is what is the desktop environment where the thin -up packages are being registered? While it's not as important to know what types of systems the end users are utilizing, for example, physical PCs, virtual desktops, or remote desktops, knowing this will give you some idea as to where the user's desktop resides and what additional systems may be involved and in potentially affecting the startup time and registration time of a ThinApp package. An example mentioned previously also has application here, which is if the ThinApp package registers slow from either a remote share or removable media, copying the ThinApp package to the local drive of a clean Windows desktop VM will potentially alleviate network constraints. Assuming the application registration performance is improved, we can conclude the issue is somewhere in the network environment configuration. For example, maybe the share is overloaded, on-demand antivirus is enabled, or latency between the server and workstation is too high. These are just a few of the more commonly seen configuration issues which may cause a ThinApp package to run or register slowly. In the event the ThinApp package still has slowness issues when registering from the local drive of a clean Windows desktop VM, then assuming the Windows VM and the underlying host have no issues, we can speculate configurations may exist virtually within the ThinApp package, which are causing the apparent slowness in registrations. While slowness of registration for ThinApp packages which reside on the local Windows hard drive are very rare, it is possible for larger packages to have longer registration processes, especially if those packages have a large number of entry points, each having a significant number of system touch points which must be addressed during the ThinApp package registration, such as desktop, start menu, and quick launch or taskbar shortcuts, file type associations, protocol associations, and com object associations. While registration of these items is extremely quick, it can be safe to assume the more of these items which exist within a ThinApp package, the longer it may possibly take for the ThinApp package to register with the Windows operating system. Therefore, only having the necessary components, shortcuts, protocols, and file associations enabled within the ThinApp package may be of benefit when registering larger ThinApp packages. Having a significant number of ThinApp packages can potentially cause noticeably greater registration times as well, especially when taking into account all of the previously mentioned information on ThinApp package location. This is true even if the permitted group settings within the ThinApp packages do not allow the users in question permissions to run the ThinApp packaged application. This is specifically true with the use of the ThinRig utility when executing at login via a login script for all users and the command line used within the script is simply to register all ThinApp packages in the root of a share. In this type of setting, while the length and registration time for all ThinApp packages within a share is usually directly proportional to the number of ThinApp packaged applications in the share, the number of ThinApp packages needed to cause a significant delay in application registration on a user desktop login will greatly vary depending upon the network environment configurations and settings in place. For example, one ThinApp customer may experience a noticeable registration delay process with only 100 ThinApp packages and 10 users logging in simultaneously while another customer won't start noting any significant delays in application registration during user login until they get close to 1,000 ThinApp packages and 500 simultaneous logins. In addition, when and how users log in may indicate a potential resource demand bottleneck on the network, especially in cases such as shift workers or classroom environments where users log into the network and desktop in mass.
Having additional validation logic, such as within login scripts, group policies, or elsewhere for these types of situations will help both spread the load and ensure the user's environment and applications are ready to go without any perceivably long delays. In conclusion, you'll find when tuning ThinApp packaged applications, not only is it important to know and understand your application and how it works, but it is also important to realize with the use of ThinApp how potentially bad or lazy programming is exposed and how such programming may slow the application down. When tuning applications and environments for optimal performance, whether virtually or natively, one can see virtually everything within ThinApp is customizable. And finally, we see not only is every application, user, and network environment unique, but how each execution of an application is also unique. Because of this, we can see how best practices for tuning each and every aspect of the native and virtual environments does solely lie in the eye of the beholder. Here are a number of additional ThinUp support, educational, and professional references and resources which exist for customers and can provide great benefit in helping customers obtain optimal ThinUp performance for all users in all environments. Thank you for viewing this ThinUp Bootcamp series presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your VMware representative or the VMware Customer Support Desk for additional assistance.